Welcome to the Personal Innovation Podcast, brought to you by PersonalInnovationHub.com. This podcast is all about igniting dreams, passions, careers, and social impact. The objective is for us all to master our inner gifts, create our own future, and live our lives as a love story while leaving a dent on the universe. And now, here's your host, Eric Suriram. Hello, innovation family. My name is Eric Sayram, your personal innovation evangelist. My work is simply to make us all think bigger about who we are, what we do in a unique way, and how we can change the world by doing work we love. Remember to subscribe to the Personal Innovation Podcast on iTunes or Apple Podcast. And on Android, get the Stitcher or a tuning app and visit personalinnovationhub.com. It is where you want to go if you are thinking of building a brand based on your unique selling persona. In this episode of your motivational personal innovation podcast, I bring to you an interesting chat between me and a lady I believe is building a unique personal brand as a techno-social entrepreneur. But before then, here is today's quote from Kato the Elder. And I quote, After I am dead, I'll rather have people ask why I have no monument than why I have one. End of quote. Regina, on behalf of the Personal Innovation Hub and the Innovation Family, I welcome you to the Personal Innovation Podcast. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Great. Um, I know you're fired up and my listeners are fired up to listen to all the value bombs that you'll be dropping on this episode. Are you ready to help my listeners to dream no matter how small, become more passionate about their dreams, create their own unique careers, and leave a dent on the universe? Yes, I am. Great. Would you rather innovate or stagnate? Innovate. Why innovate? I think without innovation, you know, the world as we know it will cease to have a certain purpose or meaning because it's like we're just living day by day without actually bringing anything. You know, before people were riding on horses, then there were cars, now there are airplanes. Now Google is building cars that drive themselves. Innovation is the bedrock of human civilization. Without it, we will just cease to exist, literally. People, innovation is the bedrock of human civilization. And without it, we are unable to exist. So what it means is that you, if you're not innovating, you are not existing, basically. Wow, interesting. Can you please tell us a bit more about yourself? I don't know where to start. Um, I think I have, over the years, discovered that I have two personalities, right? So I am, when I'm the personal vagina, I am a quiet um Mother, wife, Christian, um, sister, mentor, role model. And then when I wear my CEO hat, I am ambitious, driven, innovative, and a big risk taker. Wow. Interesting. What puts you on fire today? What is your passion today? So my passion has always been within... um, human development. So for me, it's all about skills development. I think that the African should be able to solve its own problems. Um, And I think that a tool that will help us is science and technology. So I'm passionate about developing our biggest resource, which is our human resource, and giving us the skills to be able to reach our full potential. Wow. Let's go back into time. Since childhood, what have you always dreamt or fantasized becoming? And has this changed today? So when I was younger, I was very good in science and math. And back then, you know, when you're good in science and math, you're supposed to be a doctor. So I was given the doctor career. And I think it was class six when I realized that I had too much empathy to be a doctor. What that means is that I would follow everybody home to find out why you have a headache, why your arm is broken, you know, um, and I wasn't very good with blood. Um, and then my father bought him a computer. I played Pac-Man. I fell in love with it and I wanted to make my own Pac-Man. And I found that in order to do that, I would have to learn to code. So from that day on, I was like, okay, I want to learn to code. Um, and I found out that people that could learn computer science. And I was like, and I want to become a computer scientist. And I have chased that dream up till today. We'll come back to that dream. <laughs> Regina, entrepreneurship or employment? Which of these two will you choose any day and why? 
entrepreneurship any day. Um, for me, employment is a great option, but I think entrepreneurship just brings so much more to the table in the sense that you are able to provide solutions to problems that we face and you are also able to leave a legacy for the next generation. So I think, I mean, entrepreneurship and it's also the roller coaster ride of entrepreneurship is exciting depending on what kind of individual that you are. I find it, you know, exhilarating every day that I come to work. I know that it's not going to be like it was yesterday. Wow. Innovation family. It's a fun, fun field roller coaster and it's all about leaving a legacy. What would you say is your career today? Do you think it's a bad fit job? Is it your dream job or you say it's a bridge job? So, I mean, for me, the work that I do is my dream job. Like, um, I'm living my dream every day because I get to do what I'm passionate about. I get to do what I love. And when I go home, I'm so fulfilled. Um, in prior before I started this journey of entrepreneurship, I don't think I was always as fulfilled because I felt that there was something missing. I felt that there was something more I could do. I felt that I wasn't using my full capabilities and potential um, in corporate Ghana because it, it has a lot of bureaucracy and can sometimes stifle innovation and growth. But since I took the bold step of starting my own um, enterprise, I think I am living my dream every day. Wow. So what specific do you help people achieve today that would say this is exactly what she does? So what I do is I teach coding skills to children and adults. Um, and why that is important is that coding is the language of the future. And the way the world is going, technology is going to dominate. So we need to be able to create it. And we need as a people to be able to use technology to help us leapfrog our infrastructure challenges and solve some of our most pressing problems. So an example is for young children that are, have all these wonderful ideas, how are they able to realize it? And technology can be an enabler. Um, we have some of our mentees that have gone on to start online companies, have gone on to start foundations, have gotten scholarships to study computer science. And um, there's one mentee that has um, started an online advertising company and another that is addressing the issue of sickle cell, creating awareness, has created this website with informational videos. And um, another that started, taught herself how to bake and has started her own company called Free Bites because before she was giving everybody free bites of cake. So for me, the impact of the work that we're doing, you can see today, which really uplifts us. And um, I can tell you, another one of our fellows has just become an associate of the Royal Commonwealth Foundation. Wow. And she's doing amazing things. So there's that domino effect, right? So I feel like what changing one person's life, she will go on to change another person's life. That person will go on to change another person's life. That ripple effect is what we need. It is called changing lives galore. <laughs> wow, interesting. But let's go to the basics. To the lay person, what is coding? So coding is really like giving the computer instructions. So whatever you want the computer to do, you give it instructions. And it's like a language. If you go to France and you want to speak to a Frenchman, you speak French. It's the same thing. So if you want to tell the computer, when I press this button, I want this light to come on. Or um, I'm going to create Microsoft Word or Facebook or WhatsApp. The instructions that you give to that computer is called coding. The instructions you give to that computer exactly. it's called coding so if i understand that right uh, if i have a baby um and i want this baby to do something i will say hi sweetheart can you bring me that cup mm -hmm. so that is the instruction i've given right. so he goes or she goes to pick the cup exactly. so that's just coding that's just wow that. it's just basic then i can start coding today you can start today <laughs> wow so if you're listening out there and you think it's a rocket science Regina is making it so simple and getting everybody to code. What would you say is your career and personal goal? So for me, my personal goal is to make sure that young Africans, you know, are not relying on the government or aid to be able to solve their own problems. I want them to have the skills to solve their own problems. And I feel that technology can help them do that. So that was, is just my simple personal goal. I really want young Africans to develop their full potential. Developing your full potential, you have the power 
within you and you just have to nurture and hone that power, that spirit that you have within you to blossom. How did you discover your career path? Tell us about how the journey all started. So I was socialized like a typical Ghanaian girl. And what that means is that in back in the time where I was born, you know, children were supposed to be seen and not heard, you know. A good girl keeps quiet. If you speak out and you're all over the place, you are seen as, you know, um, Tunu. And I remember that I, I was a talkative and I used to talk a lot. And my my mother would say, people would tell my mother, why don't you let your daughter keep quiet? And she'd be like, I don't know when she's going to say something important. So I'm just going to let her keep talking. And um, so I was very risk averse. You know, I wanted to play by the rules. I felt that life was going to be black and white. I felt that hard work equals result. But as the only female in the IT department in both of the institutions where I worked, I began to face different types of sexism and discrimination. And I realized that being a minority in a male-dominated field had its own challenges. So I slowly began to realize that hard work did not necessarily always equals the result that you were you know, expecting. And for me, I also felt that I wasn't given the opportunity based on the space that I worked to innovate as much as I wanted. So it was a very difficult process. I, I remember when I resigned, I just did it. I didn't even know when I woke up in the morning that I was going to resign that day. I just had a strong feeling and I'm a very spiritual person. So I remember I went to the bathroom and I prayed and I said, Jesus, you have to take the wheel. And I... Wrote my resignation letter and my manager was like, oh, I'll be back in six months. It's very hard out there, you know. And it was the morning that I had my first panic attack because I thought, ish, this has to be either the most stupid thing I've ever done in my life or I'm onto something. Um, and from that, I always knew that I wanted, you know, I had software development skills and I wanted to use my skills to make money. I also knew that I wanted to do social impact work, but I didn't like how NGOs were running. I didn't want to rely on donor funding. I wanted to be independent and be able to make my own money so that I, I, the project that I started could always be running. So I decided to merge the two, and then I discovered that there was this whole new thing called social enterprise. So for me, it was like, that makes so much sense. I think you should be able to generate your own money and use that money for social good. Wow. You should be able to generate your own money and use that money for social good. And that is the most important part of living your life as a love story. Um, I, I want us to go into this. Yes, there are people out there who are thinking that they are not in the, that right fit job. They are not living their dreams. They are not happy about where they are. And we've been there before. Tell us, what was the feeling like? You know... There's a reason why they call a nine to five job the rat race, right? Yeah. Because you feel like you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And when your salary increase, your living expenses increase. So you're really at the same place. Right? Yeah. So for me, I felt this can't be like everything that I'm going to do. Like, yes, I had my nine to five job, uh, which had become monotonous. I felt like there was something more I should be doing in yeah. my life, you know, but I was like, ish. Am I sure I can do it? You know, you always have this voice that keeps telling you negative things like, oh, you are not ready. Mm -hmm. You don't have a rich uncle. You know, uh, you, have you seen that uh, guy who tried to start a company? Look at him now. He's, you know, struggling for a job. So I think that that voice kind of kept me um, not to be able to leave as soon as I should have. Right. So um, for me, it was just that feeling that I think I can do more. I wow. know that I was placed on this earth to do more and I feel like I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm loving this episode because already value bombs have been dropped and I'm having goosebumps already. Wow, interesting. What do you have to tell my listeners? People who are at the office listening to this right now or they are uh, in a car driving or they are listening to this anywhere they are listening to it at and they're thinking about leaving that job breaking away from that routine um they feel like they are they, they are in the rat race and they are feeling like they are uh, a square peg in a round hole what do you want to tell them for me i think what i have to say is i was never really 
like any special kind of individual who had, you know, some special identifiable traits in the beginning. People that meet me today are so shocked because I was just like everybody else. You know, I was just, you know, very scared to take so much risk. I was just living my life, you know, following all the rules. When I look at my life today, sometimes I am shocked because I think, wow, I could not have had this life because I was afraid to try. And what I would say to people is, there's nothing wrong in being different. It's your difference that makes you unique. It makes you who you are. And there's nothing wrong in trying, stepping out. Failure is a learning experience, right? And in my entrepreneurial journey, I failed in many different things. It just makes me stronger. So don't let failure hold you back. What will be sad is when you are 50, 60, 70, 80, and then you live a life of regret because you never took that step. Wow. Say that again. A failure is a learning experience. You know, you learn from it. I think all the great people or the great leaders or the great successful business people have all failed at something. It's, it's how you learn. It's how you grow. If you, you are not failing, they are not taking bigger risk. You know, you are just wow. playing in your comfort zone. Your failure should make you stronger. Regina, we believe all humans are unique. What would you say is that particular skill or ability, talent or personality trait that makes you stand out from anyone else who does exactly what you do? I think what makes me different is I have this attitude of never giving up, which even irritates me sometimes. Because until I've achieved what I want to achieve, I just keep going. When I fall, I get up. When I fall, I get up. I just can't stop. Till I get what I want. So I think that is what makes me different. I have this resilient spirit that is able to rise above adversity. No matter what the adversity is, I just lift myself up and continue. When I fall, lift myself up and keep going. Lift yourself up even when you fall 20, 10 times, if there's something like that. <laughs> what do you think is the key reason why people would want to work with you? Tell us that unique selling persona that unique selling persona that you that you have that that makes people come back uh f- f- customers stakeholders uh, donors anybody that w- would want to even uh your your staff or your team members what do they do you think is the reason why they would want to work with you i think that the first thing that you must communicate effectively to whichever stakeholder is the vision right you must get people to buy into that vision and believe that together we are achieving a common goal and we all believe in this goal. I think it's simply what I've been able to do well. I've been able to communicate what my vision is and I've been able to get people to buy in and believe in that vision. So we are a team. We go together, be it our clients, our stakeholders, our volunteers, our mentors, my team, our beneficiaries. We are all working towards a common goal. We are all working towards a common goal and that is great. If you will start all over, what one thing will you change? And what one thing will you surely repeat? If you start all over again, what one thing? What is that one thing that you change? And secondly, that's one thing that you will surely repeat. So for me, I think one thing I would change is a personal struggle that I have. Like I said, I have two different personalities. I want to have been able to reach the point where the two coexist, right? Where I'm always constantly confident and constantly chasing after my dreams. But there are moments where I'm scared. In fact, I'm scared about every decision I take, right? Because the fear... Which is good. Yeah, Fear is good. Sometimes it makes you think twice when you're taking decisions. But I still go despite the fear. Um, The only thing is maybe when I go out sometimes, I... I must network more, talk more. I'm very quiet and reserved, which I must learn to break out of my shell more because I think I spend a lot of time behind the computer than doing human interaction. <laughs> so that's one thing I would change, you know, getting more sort of a of a charisma to be able to um, engage more with people when I meet them. The thing that I will repeat is I feel my resilient spirit and my passion. I think whatever happens, those two have kept me going. Because if I didn't have that, I would have given up a long time ago. Because there are so many hurdles that come your way that will attempt to break your spirits and tell you, look, you made a big mistake. But because of my passion and my resilience, I tell myself, you know, I'm going to keep going no matter what. Wow. I, I had wanted to ask this question, but you hinted it a bit. 
Um, we say that people who who do code or people who are into technology, they are nerdy, they are quiet, they are they are not uh, they are mostly introverts. Uh, how true is that? And in your situation, even though you said that uh, you love to sit behind your computer more, uh, how true is that? And uh, in your case, how is it? So, I mean, I don't think a profession defines a person, right? So, there are doctors that are, you know, um, like, like to work a lot. There are doctors that like to party. There are um, um, different kinds of individuals. So, yes, there's that stereotype that um, developers or coders are introverted. But that's not true. I know lots of developers that are very out there. You know, they, they are loud. They like talking. They like having fun. I am a diff, I'm an individual that was, like I said, so I was just quiet and I've always been quiet. It has nothing to do with the fact that I decided to become a developer. I was quiet even before I became a developer. So I think now I have changed and evolved. I'm getting better. I mean, I, since I became the Vlisqua ambassador, you know, I've been doing a lot of fashion and tech. Um, I've always been the kind of individual that knows how to engage an audience when I'm like, you know, speaking or interacting with them. What I'm not good at is personal one to one, but even that I'm, I'm working on. So I don't think being an introvert is necessarily something that happens just because you're a coder. You are either that, and you, I could have been anything else. I was always an introvert, so it's a personal trait that I, I have. Tell us about the developments uh, or the trends, uh, the growth of the Ghana um, developers community. What is happening? What are the trends? Uh, are there improvements? Uh, are people doing g- great stuff? Uh, what is happening? I think there are improvements um, from when I started, and um, now there are... I can confidently say there are more developers in the ecosystem. I can also confidently say that um, developers are doing more interesting projects. Um, Yes, we still need to collaborate more. That's one thing that's uh, missing. But I think we are now making enough noise to attract international attention for the fact that... um, Do you you think we can get there uh, to that international level where people are doing great stuff out there? Uh, do you think the Ghanaian, the African developer can get there? I think we can get there, but there has to be different stakeholders have to come together for that to happen, right? So, I mean, it's not just the developer alone. The country has to provide enabling environments, you know, um, governments have to help in terms of policy, in terms of um, engaging um, young developers and helping them. Um, there should be setting breaks and incentives to Push technology. I also think that there should be certain base and incentives to make Ghana an attractive destination. I mean, India positioned itself as sort of a tech maker where everybody outsourced their business there. You know, somebody will complete national service and then is working in a call center or a data center and America, Russia, Romania, everybody sending their work there. Kenya has branded itself as a silicon savannah of Africa. It's just a brand. I don't think the developers in Kenya are any better than developers in Ghana, we are all equally good. So I think so many different players have to come together. For what what, what do you think? What do you think is what is preventing Ghanaian developers to come together? Elsewhere, people come together in all fields, not only in the coding community mm-hmm. or the developers uh, uh, ecosystem, but in business everywhere. People come together to form up form things and build businesses and do great projects. Why is that difficult in Ghana? What is our mentality? You know, I think it's an interesting question because as a people, we are supposed to be communal, right? But essentially, I think the Ghanaian, based on how things have gone, has learned to survive by taking care of self, you know? So if there are two individuals where by they have to come together and they start to make money, there's going to be the challenge where one person will feel that, ah, no, I mean, I feel like I should either be getting more or I feel like I'm doing more work or one person feels like, no, I should be the boss instead of this person. So the challenge is I feel people are more content to have 100% of nothing than 10% of a thousand or 10% of a million. If you're out there and you think you want 100% of nothing, 
please think again. Go collaborate with that person that is doing wonderfully well. Perhaps the person is good in marketing and you are the technology guy. Come together, get a marketing guy to do that branding for you, do that marketing for you, and let's move forward. Personal innovation is defined as the ability to see new opportunities where others don't, create new positions and jobs that never existed, while undergoing continuous learning and adapting to economic change. How important and relevant do you think the concept of personal innovation is today? It's very, very important and relevant. And I think I'm a perfect example of that. I mean, when we, I started the organization 2012, I mean, nobody was talking about coding for children. In fact, it was like, it's almost impossible for kids to learn to code. I remember when I first suggested it, people were like, oh no, it's so hard. You have to go to university. You have to have two heads or something to be able to learn it, you know? And I, I saw that this was going to be something that was going to be big, you know? And I went for it. And I feel like that's what has given me the edge. I had, you know, first movers advantage. You know, I started when nobody else was thinking about yeah. it. So um, it, I think I'm a perfect example of that. You really need to always be looking at what are the next trends that are going to happen, you know, and see into the future. So sort of <laughs> so take, take, me through, take me through this process. If I bring my child today, uh, my 11-year-old child, um, and I say, just get this girl to start coding for me. What so, is the process? How so, do you take? So now we have girls and boys. Um, so they, they come to the school. They can pick whether they want to study web development or mobile development. Um, but we recommend that they start off with web development because it's, um, it gives them a good, a better foundation. So they'll go through a six to eight week program. Um, and they will learn HTML, CSS, bootstrap, and they will all work on a project. So by the time they are done, they would have either built a web application or a website or a mobile application, and then they can host it. And then we have complementary courses. We have entrepreneurship, we have public speaking, presentation skills. So then we also give them a holistic approach. Now that they've learned the skill, if they wanted to do something extra with it, this is what it means. So your 11 year old will come in here with probably um, some basic IT skills and leave here a potential, you know, tech entrepreneur or the next Mark Zuckerberg. Wow. Interesting. Who is that one individual, an icon, a celebrity, a mentor, a coach that you look up to in everything you do and why? Wow, that is a good question. Hmm. I think recently, you know, I think things change. Um, I've, I've looked up to different people. Um, and I think my recent person that I'm, I've really been touched by was when I met Bishop T.D. Jakes. Wow, I saw a picture of you. Yeah, he was amazing. I think he was God sent. I think we, the interview that we had, I left with such a renewed sense of purpose and he really spoke to my spirit, you know, and I felt after that meeting that, you know, the work that I'm doing, God has anointed me to do it, right? And I should not let all the things that sometimes get me down, get me down. And I should keep going. So in that moment, you know, I, I felt so much fulfillment, you know, that this was really the right path. So for me, I think that encounter with Bishop T.D. Jakes was really um, a defining moment. Wow. It was a defining. Tell us something, one takeaway that you took from that meeting. That strong takeaway that you you don't care sharing with my community. So um, Bishop Jakes asked several questions, and you know, one of the things that he kept saying is, "Regina, I've spoken to different people, but I think that you believe that you will change the world, and I think you can." You know, and prior to that meeting, you know, I feel that I had set several goals in my mind, and obviously, I mean, I do believe I will change the world. To hear it again, being echoed like that, I believed it more, you know. I believe that I'm not just here to, you know, um, just do some work, but I'm actually here because I can be an individual that changes the world. You know, that notion that one person can change the world, I'm not a big believer of it. So he left that sort of, what, what is it that you say, value bombs yeah. <laughs> in my mind. And I've been reminiscing, reflecting, using it to encourage myself. Wow. If you're in your corner, in that living room, sitting with that television, uh, you are in that corner just thinking that you can't change the world. <laughs> Stop thinking that way. Start thinking big. 
and you can really change the world. Regina, do you think you are a brand today? Do you believe you can become a brand that would drive emotions, loyalty, credibility, and return on investment and be remembered even when you are no more? I think that is happening. You know, I think I've heard several stories or met people that went to, have started learning coding because of me, have gone to Ashesi because of me, because they heard my story. Um, with my international exposure, because like, for example, I was just there when I got a call that Bishop TDJ wants to interview me. And without a brand, that hasn't happened, you know. Um, I, I also just got another message that, um, Nas and Lauren Hill are doing a, a concert and they are giving out some money to charities. And we were one of the charities that were selected. Wow. I mean, all, all those things reaffirm to me that brand is everything because you can't be everywhere. But if you position yourself, opportunity will meet you. You know, so I am an individual that, like I said, since I'm very quiet, I'm not very good at going all the time to look for things. Hold on. Let me give my people this one. If you position yourself, opportunity will just meet you. Yeah. It will just meet you. But it doesn't happen when you don't position yourself. Exactly. So start today and position yourself. Richard, tell us, what steps have you taken in the past? You know, your today is defined by your yesterday. You did, you actually did something yesterday that made TD Jakes to give give you that call. That is making donors, people say you are the organization they want to invest into. What have you done in the past to build this brand? So when I started, I said I looked at myself and I said, look. What am I going to do? Because I, I cannot, I'm not going to be the loud person in the room. I'm not going to be the one that goes around everywhere. But what I can do is I can position myself. So I wanted to be a thought leader when it comes to women empowerment, girls empowerment, and technology. And so what I did is I used my social media channels to have the same message. If you came onto my social media, I was talking about those three things all the time, nonstop. You know, um, I made sure that I had become, quote unquote, an expert in that field. And if you were looking for somebody, my name should come first in a Google search. If you are looking for technology in Ghana, women in tech, girls in tech, um, STEM movement, I should be there. So I made sure that I was deliberate in my messaging. So, and I was like really shaping myself to be a thought leader. Wow, Innovation Family, deliver a message that is consistent, deliver a message that is deliberate, rational-based images, uh, messages and emotional-based messages that are consistent and positions you as an authority in your field, as the go-to person in your field. What do you see if you even Google your name today? What do you see? Google yourself right now and find out what you see. And if there's no, there's nothing good about you, start thinking, start doing something today. Do something before you die. Seriously. Regina, it is said that your network is your net worth. We need to always think about who we know and who knows us to help advance our dreams. How true do you think this saying is? And how do you go about networking with people necessary to achieve your dreams? So the saying is very, very true. I mean, those, that's one of the things I learned the hard way. I mean, when I started, I thought, oh, I mean, I, there's such so, so much, limited opportunities here, you know. But then when I engaged in a certain network and I increased my network, I realized there's boundless opportunities. You know, um, if you're not in certain networks, you won't know. And that is why the rich keep getting richer and the poor stay poor, right? Because... Certain networks have access to information, have access to resources, have access to key people who can make things happen. If you are not in that network, really, it's very difficult. Um, so how you do that? You know, I think that every individual that you meet is a potential you know, network, but you must also screen the people, right? So there are people that come your way based on different things. When you have your highs, everybody wants to yeah. associate themselves with you. When you're at your lows, then you see who your true friends are. But at the end of the day, you must make every connection. Like if you go somewhere, make sure you have a business card. Make sure that, and when you take that card, make sure that you do a follow on email. People exchange business cards all the time, myself included. What is that person going to remember you by? He met 
so many people and took so many cards and took so many cards in fact your card will just be lying somewhere but if you feel that this is a person i really want to connect with after that you know initial meeting you send an email you do a follow up you have to build your network for it to bring value you can't just say okay i know so so and so 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 and so so and so the day that you need help and you call them they'll be like who is this you know they don't know you so you must make sure that even though you've met somebody or you know somebody you build that network you build that relationship it may not pay off today but it will happen in the future right so don't take networking as oh you just give somebody a business card and the person took your business card and you have network the person will never remember you wow networking is is something that we all need to know learn about we we all need to master how to network it's not just about knowing somebody or getting the person to know you but you need to create a value for that person get that person to remember you all the time for instance if you go into a networking event and you met somebody if you go home you can call up or send a text message it was great meeting you i value our uh, discussion it was such a great one or even send something to that person that the person needs yes i have been reading this book i think you also need it uh, so you send that book or that podcast episode or that thing that can bring value to that person's life and continue that spe- uh, consistently and you will have a great relationship with people and you can become that brand that you want um i believe that strong brands impact society positively and that is why they are remembered even when they are no more tell us about what you do today you are planning to do to impact the world and leave a dent on the universe so i think it's in changing the lives of our mentees and the children that have passed through there you know have passed through either one of our programs you know so we've had programs for deaf or the hearing impaired children we've had programs for several girls in rural communities and you know in um, slum communities now we've opened up this academy i want every child to have had a life changing experience just by having an encounter with our program right so if they if they pass through here when they get older either they've changed their career aspirations either they've got some more opportunity either now they've developed a, a greater sense of self and purpose or they've learned a skill that's going to help them i think as they are going they pay it for it help another person at, at this point i want to show some love to your academy so i will open up give me something about just give us details about your academy and talk to people out there who are interested in bringing their um kids who are interested in investing or sponsoring your work talk to them. talk so, to them um our academy is at East Legon. we have classes for children from 5 years all the way up to 18 we also have now classes for adults and um, we have weekday and weekend options and um, your kids can learn how to do web development mobile app development blogging and e-commerce um, and then we have complementary courses in entrepreneurship public speaking and also human centered design your child's life will not be the same once they come here you know? your your child's life will not be the same once they come here um i can say anything more to you than to just go online and look for Sonko Academy. Academy. Yes. Go online, Google it today. Don't waste any time. Just go online now. Use your phone, Google Sonko Academy. Uh make sure you go to their Facebook page. Make sure you follow them everywhere. They are doing great stuff. Regina, we all have to become innovators of our own careers and lives. Companies have always needed to innovate in order to stay relevant and competitive in the marketplace. But now, so do we as individuals. What do you do to make sure that you stay educated you stay knowledgeable you said networking is good so you will be doing more of that mm. what do you do to make sure that you stay up to date as far as your area of expertise and industry is concerned 
So learning is a lifelong experience. Um, I'm always reading. Um, one of the things that I do is I have Google alerts for things that are of interest uh, to me within the tech space. Um, I have, I listen to different podcasts and, you know, watch different shows and, um, buy the newspaper, listen to radio monitors. Cause we, now we, I we have a great home. time, don't you think? <laughs> we have a great time where it's not just the classroom. Exactly. You can learn everywhere. Uh, YouTube is a whole, uh, <laughs> and and there are lots of things out there now. If if you are saying that you don't have information on what you want to do, your passion today, please, you are joking. Then you are not passionate enough. Mm-hmm. Go online. Resources are abound. PDF documents you can download. Videos you can download to watch. Wow, the the opportunities are there. You see, so the skills of yesterday might not be as important in five years, and the technology we use today may be obsolete next year. Open your tools box for my listeners. <laughs> we want to look into your tools box. What tools, what book, what internet resource do you like and use that you'd like to recommend to my listeners? And for, for your personal life, for your professional life, let's open your toolbox. If you can give me three tools, two, I'll be happy. So, like I said, Google Alerts are, you know, um, amazing. You know, they really notify you on everything that's happening, things that you have, trends that are, or things that are important to you. As soon as they happen, you get a notification. This is happening. You can check and read on it. Um, Wikipedia and all the wiki open source movements. So, there's a, um, like, PDF educational scholarly articles that you can access for free there is a uh, creative common images and um, videos there's like a whole open source movement that's also happening where you can get so much information also for free so i, I could go on and on about all the different things in my toolbox but i feel like i've benefited from you know doing a lot of research if and if all else fails use the oracle google type even if you like type it as a question how do I learn more things? You get you get tons <laughs> of <laughs> of how you can how the how to uh, uh, articles, how to videos, how to everything yeah. is online. You see, I believe that strong bands are those who are able to communicate their vision, their mission, and values to stakeholders in a way that resonates with their target audience, and that is why they fall in love with them. Now, tell us, how are you sharing your personality, your values, and what you have created with your target audience? And with the world. So I think that one of the things um, I'm passionate about is mentoring and um, being open and transparent about my journey. I, I feel like we get a lot of support um, because people have followed us and have seen what is happening. So, and I'm, I'm very giving. I feel like I should be able to replicate myself such that the work can go on. And by replicate myself, I mean share my knowledge, share my experience, such that we get there together. There's a proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So I don't think I am the only one who is going to be able to deliver on all the goals that I have. So I must make sure that I pass, I share. Please don't die with your dreams. Share your dreams. Share your passion. Share your skills with people. I I have followed somebody uh, in the blogging world who has been doing blogging for so long and um, went hiking and just died. But today the blog is still alive and still working. The wife took over and the blog is as fresh. Every content is as, as though it has been written by that same person. So please, don't die with your knowledge. Personal innovation challenge now. On this podcast, we have a challenge. Um, we, we want to give ourselves a challenge. And this is uh, something that you promise that the next time we speak to you again, uh, which of course, this is not the first time you're speaking to, we'll be, uh, the last time we'll be speaking to you, we'll be speaking to you again about specific areas in, in technology, specific areas in uh, entrepreneurship. But today, tell us, what is that passion project? So it can be a book, a public speaking, or blogging, podcasting, YouTube, it's anything that you want to start. And that's in the next, yes, apart from your academy and what you do today, something huge, that's the next time we meet. Uh, yeah, you are taking some coke now. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll do some coke. If, if you not do some wine with me, <laughs> we'll do some Coke and I'll give you a nice hug for that. 
Let me see. Okay, so let me think personal. What is one of the things that, oh, okay, this one is. So I'm a new mother. And um, I think if you check in with me later, one of the um, passion projects that I should be able to is how I'm able to balance motherhood and entrepreneurship. Great. You know, I feel like that is my latest challenge. So that, that's no, your new project. My new project, because <laughs> that is very difficult. Yeah. So. When you check in, uh, let me give you updates on if I have dropped all the balls or the balls are still being juggled. The balls would have to be there <laughs> and none will be dropped. There will be more balls added. <laughs> we have to constantly evolve, adapt to new realities, be accountable for ourselves and think creatively if we want to survive. What final lesson or words of wisdom and guidance do you want to offer my audience who are also trying to dream, follow their passion and create a career out of it? Was impacting the world like you're doing today? Very simple. Mute the voice that says you can't. You are more than what you think you are. Please tell that voice, shut up <laughs> right now. <laughs> shut up. Tell that voice to shut up. Are you ready to make your personal innovation pledge now? Oh, are you wow. ready? Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Mm. So you repeat after me. Okay. I pledge to continue living my dream. I pledge to continue living my dream. I pledge to think bigger about who I am. I pledge to think bigger about who I am. I pledge to change the world by doing what I love. I pledge to change the world by doing what I love. So help me God. So help me God. On behalf of the Univation family, we have witnessed your pledge and pray you fulfill it. Amen. Thank you for being with us on this episode. And we pray that everything that you've, you have planned will come to fruition. Amen. Thank you. Remember to subscribe because there's more to come. Follow Eric on Twitter at Sir Eric Suryram A and on Facebook, facebook.com slash personal innovation hub. Remember to rate and review the show. Share this with friends who need to hear.